Brian Sussman is behind this new uh, look at the dangers of anthropogenic global warming alarmism and the arrogation of powers onto forces uh, that want to control every aspect of your life in such a brilliant way by controlling work directly, by controlling carbon and uh, leading you to believe that they are controlling the climate for you. Brian Sussman from KSFO, welcome. Franklin, great to be with you. It's always wonderful to be in Chicago Lab. Yes, well, I nearly moved out there to KSFO, and I was very excited about the prospect of producing for uh, Michael Savage. One of the wow. things we were talking okay. about, yeah, I was uh, Gordon Liddy's executive producer and, and, and Mike Reagan, and I really love Savage. We have all many of the same friends uh, from mm-hmm. different worlds, from boating worlds and, and broadcasting world. And I was so excited about it. And one of the things I was curious is, will you, sir, do your show from KSFO, or do I have to hide behind the curtains in your living room <laughs> in order to produce your show? And I, I never really got a satisfactory answer, but you work with such a great team there, and I'm glad uh, you know everybody in radio talks about what's happening at KSFO. It's the bellwether. It's a great station, and you are doing a great job. Meteorologist, yeah. author, host of the morning show. Um, it's really very much your station. I'm very, very pleased to have you on our little outfit here, WCGO in Chicago. Tell us well, about listen. the genesis of the documentary. Excellent. And uh, and I appreciate that wonderful introduction. That's fantastic. This, uh, this documentary is really uh, talking about the, well, let's just think about this. It's easy being green when you have no choice of the title. Think about how we've, we've fallen into this, Franklin. It started with the low-flow toilets, and it started with the low-flow uh, showerhead. Hey, it's easy to save water when you have no choice. Uh, we are told we have to have greater fuel economy. Well, that's easy when the EPA is putting out regulations for fuel economy so we have lighter and less safe vehicles. Uh, we were told, well, listen, you've got to save the forests. Well, yeah, it's easy to save the forests when we've been told we can't cut them down because of law, and now we import so much of our lumber. So it's this bureaucratic regulation that's creeping upon us, taking us over, and we're always rolling over and taking it right now. So, yeah, we're really green, but we have no choice. You know, uh, by the way, Brian, you remind me of a side effect I I commonly think of. Having uh, been born uh, in in the mid-'70s and having sort of come up in an era in which environmental responsibility, or what I call stewardship, was, was... was strongly supported and becoming not just trendy, but, um, you know, it was really the social revolution that followed the disaster of the late 60s. Uh, I remember that spot where there was an Indian, or I'm sorry, a Native American or First <laughs> Nations person, I don't know, standing in in a in a field of trash. And the, right. and the concept was don't litter. And by God, Brian... I took it to heart, and I still don't litter. Um, I took personal responsibility for our environment to heart. We did a big segment yesterday on the butterfly so we can learn more without engaging in in the old language. Fat cat corporate Jews are stealing butterflies. Chemical companies are killing little innocent baby butterflies. The polar bears are all dying. You know, without getting to this, we, we think about, boy, what can we do about the oceans? What are specific problems that we can... We can engage in understanding so that we can figure out what's going wrong and and how to help it. This was what I now call stewardship. And as opposed to this, we've allowed uh, the so-called greenie-weenie big government types, the globalists, the one-worlders, the international, to steer us away from personal responsibility and into a world in which we rely on government for everything, including decisions we make about property that had at one point been ours. You know, even notions like private property rights, as you as you mm-hmm. clearly point out, have been mm-hmm. have been axed. And these are fundamental American values. I mean, this is what we are all about if we are to be Americans. And I see that as part of a tragedy for our age. Oh, and by the way, I see more litter bugs than I ever saw in the 70s and 80s. That's a great point. It's a great point, Franklin. And this is what we find with, you know, it, in, it's easy being green when you have no choice. We get into exactly what you're talking about, and we get to the genesis of this. Where did all this start? Well, it really and truly began uh, with 
Vladimir Lenin writing extensive papers. He was a, a huge environmentalist way before his time, writing papers about the land and the forests and the oceans and the minerals. It's as if our own EPA and Department of Wildlife uh, and Natural Resources has taken his papers and now implemented them here in the United States. Who was Vladimir Lenin? This was a guy who was against capitalism. He was a guy who was for a heavy-handed government because he thought the people were too stupid to live without such a thing. And this was also a man who was not for property rights. So everything you just described was first proposed by Lenin and now is being implemented on steroids here in the United States of America. And, of course, being supported wholeheartedly by guys like Mikhail Gorbachev as well as the United Nations. So this is set in motion and we need to stop it. That's the purpose of this film. How long is the film? And can people get it minutes. online? 95 yeah, minutes. Can 95 they minutes. buy it online, or do they have to get a DVD, or can they download it on iTunes? Brian Sussman, how do people sort of get a hold of this, and, and where can they watch it? Can they watch it on a Excellent. portable device, or how? Excellent question. And uh, Amazon.com is where you can actually purchase it. A physical DVD will be sent to you. We haven't gotten to the download portion. I think the idea was to see how it sells in terms of an actual DVD because this is this is a feature film, and we've spent a lot of money putting this together. We have some brilliant, I mean, people with more degrees than a thermometer uh, who are talking about the various dangers we face. Uh, and, and some of the quotes are astounding. Frankly, we were able to dig up this one. I, I won't read you the whole quote, but I'll just give you a couple seconds. This is Mikhail Gorbachev after the wall has fallen in the early 90s, you know, former Soviet Union a premier, he said, in searching for a common enemy against whom we can unite, we came up with the idea that pollution, the threat of global warming, water shortages, famine and the like would fit the bill. So this is something that, that proponents of big, heavy-handed government have been pining for forever, and they're ramming it down our throats. And unless stopped, it will be the end of this country as we know it. It will be, you know, that one of the nails in the coffin and the fundamental transformation that we see going on before our very eyes. The reallocation of meaning, uh, the f- fundamental changing of terminology, is a is a major weapon of the of yes. the one worlders. Um, and yes. one of the great tragedies of the current situation in which we find ourselves, uh, Brian Sussman, yes. is is in my view that that people who who now advocate for property rights uh, individual liberty and even the sanctity of life uh, mm-hmm. even people who advocate for fact-based analysis of climatological change uh, are considered evil uh, or something yes. other than good um, and this yeah. this certainly goes back to to Leninism Stalinism Marx Weber uh, all of these guys who understood and laid out clearly for uh, the agents, I know you're an educated man, but you know the the agents of Sovkino, Alexandrov, Eisenstein, Pudovkin. These guys understood that we 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 the the, the changing of the meaning of words as Orwell to new and and Goebbels is critical in this in this venture. And again, it, it how many people, how many tens of millions of Russians had to die before a few of them looked at their own history and said, "Oh, wait a minute." What we what was happening was evil. It wasn't good. We were wrong. Uh, it's so hard to change the meaning of words, but the left succeeds in doing it. And I'm wondering how how we can possibly begin to fight back. Well, first of all, excellent excellent commentary on your part, and it's a great question. And so, in it's easy being green when you have no choice. One of the things we talk about, and this will be new to most of your audience, it does have to do with the changing of the meaning of words. Something that's taught in our colleges and universities, and it's practiced in research think tanks, especially those involving uh, the climate. It's called post-normal science. So back when we were kids in sixth grade, we all learned about the scientific method. You come up with a hypothesis, and then you try to disprove the hypothesis. And if you if you shoot one hole in that hypothesis, you have to throw it out. That's the scientific method. Well, nowadays, that's not how it's done. You come up with a hypothesis. And then you build a computer model in which you prove the hypothesis. So in other words, reality no longer matters. That's why, for example, the temperature, the actual temperature of the Earth's atmosphere, that doesn't matter anymore. What we have is a model whereby we can project what's going to happen. Again, it's called post-normal science, 
And that's what's being applied here, and that's what's being taught at our universities here. But an entire generation that, that lives on their computer, it's a virtual world for them, and now this is what they're doing in terms of pushing their various messages. Computer models are just as real as the real world to them, and that's a very dangerous thing. We talk about it again, and it's easy being green when you have no choice. Our guest is Brian Sussman uh, of the famous KSFO Morning Show, also a meteorologist uh, and author. His new documentary uh, is called It's Easy Being Green When You Have No Choice, uh, which is really quite a delightful title now that I get to know you a little better. It's got a lot of humor and tragedy in it, too. It's easybeinggreenmovie.com. It's www.itseasybeinggreenmovie.com. And also, is it right, eco-tyranny.com? Yeah, eco-tyranny is, uh, is uh, one of my sites. And, uh, and, and, yeah, and so if you go to there or, you know, the other website you just gave, or even greenflick.com, you'll be able to uh, see a trailer, the very trailer you, uh, you li- had allowed us to listen to to uh, begin this segment as well as purchase from that location as well. And you can also probably go to Amazon and just type in Brian yes. Sussman, S-U-S-S-M-A-N. As a meteorologist, uh, we have our favorites, we have our approaches, we have all kinds of opinions as non-experts. I pay close mm-hmm. attention to Joe Bastardi. I'm also a mm-hmm. sailor, so I'm I'm personally invested in and interested in atmospheric and climatological changes on a daily basis. Sure. I listen to NOAA weather radio for fun in the shower. <laughs> I'm really <laughs> geeky, but I'm not. I don't have any real training. I generally follow the 1500 year cycle theories. What mm-hmm. are your listeners telling you, and what are you telling them, and what do you explore in "It's Easy Being Green" movie? Uh, about so-called global warming and anthropogenic global warming, Brian Sussman? Well, you know, if you just look at the facts, which, again, no one seems to want to look at these days, uh, you see that the warmest decade in history was not, you know, the two, uh, two, 2000 to 2010, like Al Gore would tell you, and like NASA and Noah would tell you, it was actually the 1930s. 1930s, the hottest decade in record. Uh, since 1850, which is, you know, roughly the start of the uh, Industrial Revolution, uh, there's been an increase in temperature of 0.7 degrees Celsius on this planet. Now, here's the fact they don't want you to hear, Franklin, and that is this. Mm-hmm. 88% of that warming occurred before 1940. So, yes, there has been a little warming. Almost 90% of it took place before 1940, and there has been no warming since 1998. And there will be many, uh, many wonderful scientists, even from NASA. I'm thinking of Jack Schmidt, who even walked on the moon, who has more, you know, multiple PhDs. Uh, he would tell you, we're going into a cooling phase right now. So it's not just me, some yokel out on the left coast who's talking to an audience in Chicago, a town he loves dearly. No, th- these are high-level scientists. With no skin in the game, they're not being paid by anybody. They've made their money. They're retired now. They're telling us this, and we need to listen. Right. Conversely, we, we threw Nobel Peace Prizes around uh, for Al Gore's slideshow, uh, whose hockey <laughs> stick uh, theory was really all, exactly that. It was a theory, right, a hypothesis yes. that turned yes. out plainly to be wrong, and yet there's no accountability. There's never an apology no. There's no. never a look back or a or a reevaluation of the of the fervor of of yesteryear. Um, it is it is almost purely communist, just as you say, and has all the signs uh, that that we recognize in 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 an ideology whose fundamental purpose, though it may not begin this way, is to kill people. <laughs> That's what yeah. happens. Well, people yes, die. and in fact. Yeah. One of the things we mentioned, you played the clip to begin the segment. Um, right. You were listening to John Casey, who, of course, uh, you know, he, he used to work for NASA. This is a guy who said the end game for those who are pushing this sustainable development mantra, the end game is that you are going to be looked upon by way of your carbon footprint. And this is what kids are learning in college now. They're like, gosh, you know, I do have a carbon footprint, and my carbon footprint, I need to be responsible about this. So. The last thing I want to do is have any children because 
That means I'm just going to be adding carbon to this world. And if I'm an older person, the responsible thing to do would probably be end my life early because otherwise I'm just I'm just burning up burning up lots of uh, pol- pollution and and causing for a havoc because of my carbon footprint in my advanced age. This all sounds right. like tomfoolery, but we do talk about it, and it's easy being green when you have no choice. You know, take into its end game. It's going to be well. Take your little pill, have a little goodbye party, and that's the right thing to do in the name of being green. That's right. It's just like Logan's run, and in fact, yes. it's inspired. It's inspired by the same historical truths, isn't it? Stalinism, T yes. four, yes. uh, the T yes. four program, everything that yes. National Socialism promised uh, is mm-hmm. promised once again to us for in the name of the same aims. Brian yes. Sussman has been our, our brilliant guest, a Chicago boy, if you don't mind my calling you a boy, meteorologist, author, host of the famous KSFO morning show out there in San Francisco, and the man behind the new documentary, It's Easy Being Green When You Have No Choice. I wanted to play this for you, Brian, because it's so funny, and it's from our show, and we'll send you the clip for yours. But this, by the way, is Jesse Ventura, uh, talking about the, I guess Tom Fullery, the the utter uh, the utter silliness of the hard left. Here he is. No, Jesse but Ventura. I believe people can influence the weather. I believe that there is climate change. I see it when I cross the border. I drive to and from Mexico, and when every year, and when I come back off the grid in the springtime, it's hot in the desert, ninety nine degrees, right? I have to wait in line three hours, seven lanes of traffic to get back in my own country. While I'm waiting there, I watch the thermostat on my rearview mirror of my truck go from 99 to 116. Does that have anything to do with the fact that you're in a row of idling automobiles on the Texas-Mexico border? Yeah, it's warming the earth, isn't it? (laughs) It went from 99 degrees in the desert up to 116, and it's no other factor involved. But man, I didn't see God anywhere around. Isn't that stunning, Brian? <laughs> I, ne- I never heard anything like that. On that that's a governor, sir. Well, well on the micro <laughs> scale, we can do such things. That's what pavement models will do. But uh, you know, it doesn't it doesn't impact the macro scale unless you're doing this, Franklin. When you take temperature readings around the Earth from those very warm spots, and then throw out. Thousands of temperature readings from Canada, Siberia, the Andes Mountains, which has been done, which read colder. Right. Well, then you can get rid of the bad evidence. Temperature up warmer. Yes, that's right. Manipulate it's, the data. It, what do you call them? What you, before you throw it out, you have to call it something. Call it an a, an anomaly, right? Yes. Some of yeah, the oh, data that's was that's anomalous, so we decided to throw it out. <laughs> or, or Brian Sussman. We decided to adjust it. Hey, greenflick.com, you are the best, Franklin. An awesome opportunity to be with you. Thank you very much. It's an honor to be with you. Greenflick.com, Brian Sussman. Go to greenflick.com, pick this one up as a gift. This is uh, 1590 WCGO, Chicago's New Talk. I'm Franklin Raff. Back in a moment.